the algorithm is wrong. And I was like, no, no, no that's not how computers work. Yeah. <laughs> it probably fits into that category of things that do something, but maybe don't work exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's not about the prize. I just love doing the coding. <laughs> <laughs> then make sure you always have fun, especially don't want people doing coding and they think it's boring. I don't think I could have summed that up much better, I think. Welcome to Hello World, a podcast for educators interested in computing and digital making. I'm Carrie-Anne Philbin, a computing educator, YouTuber, author, and I guess now a podcaster. Hi, I'm James Robinson, a computing educator, and I'm currently working on projects promoting effective pedagogy within our subject. If you'd like to support our show, then please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and do leave us a five star review. Today, we're talking about getting everyone excited about code. So James, what excites you about code? Oh, so much. Um, I've, been, I've, I've enjoyed coding and programming for such a long time. And I think for me, the biggest factor is that creativity. I think, you know, I, I see it as a hugely creative um, discipline that allows people to solve problems, express ideas, and just really kind of create whatever, whatever comes to mind. Um, I think, you know, if you combine some imagination, some code and some persistence, you can get some really fantastic results. And I think in my time um, training educators through our Pi Academy program in, that we've run in the past, I've seen some fantastic projects which really exemplify that kind of, you know, imagination, code and perseverance kind of idea. So for me, it's 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 super exciting. Um, and I've heard you speak many times passionately about coding. Um what makes you so enthusiastic, Carrie-Anne, about, about this topic? I think, like you, creativity is kind of at the heart of it. I think being able to make with technology something that is meaningful to you is just so empowering that just makes you and everybody else around you super excited. But I think it's more than that. I mean, you know, whether you call it coding or programming, it is the kind of practical application of computer science. You know, it is what I really love. It's kind of mathematics and engineering and problem solving. And, you know, sometimes we hear people talk about this in terms of computational thinking. And really, it's programming is the p practical application of all of that knowledge, all of those concepts, all of those ideas in a, in a really tangible way um, that is so immersive and so, you know, uh, rewarding and exciting uh, that it's it's really difficult to not be excited by it <laughs> do you know what I mean <laughs> I do absolutely I, I completely uh, I relate to that you know the, the, the sort of experience that's important to you you kind of touched upon that idea that it's, it's something you care about and also that thing about um, it being the sort of the practical part of computer science it brings it to life really doesn't it it's where things become real and tangible and interesting and engaging yeah. And whilst we could talk about why we love uh, coding and programming for hours, oh, hours. Uh, I'm sure, yeah, I, th I think really we should hear from some other people. So let's get some more perspectives uh, and introduce our first guest, educator, PBS digital innovator, Q rock star and Raspberry Pi certified educator, Amanda Hawes. Amanda, welcome. And what gets you excited about code? Good morning. Um, oh my gosh, so much gets me excited about coding now. I um, I think you mentioned a lot of those points, Carrie Ann, just talking about um, you making things that are meaningful and being able to be creative are the biggest aspects about coding that excite me. Um, I like being able to make things that work. Not that, that that doesn't always happen, but I guess when they do work, it's exciting that, wow, I, I created this thing that didn't exist before and now... Um, here it is. And I think that's something that really excites me the most. I think that, that your comment about making things that work, I think, I mean, you could probably broaden that out and say, make things that do something. Um, they may not, maybe not always, well, I, I really get a kick from that. They may not always do what you want them to do, but them doing something is really um, engaging. James um, loses so hours and hours and hours to trying to get things just to work. <laughs> <laughs> It's not quite hours and hours, Carrie Ann, but yes, a good proportion of time. Or or losing things because I forget to save my code. That's that's the other thing that I'm I'm known for. Um, so so what's the last um, program that you that you wrote, Amanda? <laughs> it, it probably fits into that ca category of um, things that do something but maybe don't work exactly the way I want them to yet. Um, most of the things I probably um, make right now are, are for school and with my students. So little projects um, 
we've made, you know, math games in Scratch recently that's been fun. And we were playing with the light sensor on the micro bit recently, and we kind of took that and linked it in with the Mars rover um, landing. And, and we tried to prototype little rovers that now would have a headlight that was light sensitive. So that was fun. At home, I haven't had a lot of time for personal projects recently, but I've been playing with the thermal camera recently um, with the Raspberry Pi and trying to trying to learn more about that. So and your the projects that you've just spoken about, the ones where you've done with your students, are, are they linked to you know certain topic areas that you're studying at the moment with them, or are they do they come from the students' own imaginations and excitement kind of outside of that in a more informal space? I think um, yeah, both. So this year I've worked with second graders, um, so the math games have been centered around a couple of ideas. One. Um, just our observations about what particular math skills um, our classmates needed some support in. And so I pulled a small group of students who had mastered the math skill already, but now could maybe create something for their classmates to use to help them practice a bit more. So it, there was a little bit of um, design thinking work embedded in that as well. And we were thinking about our audience and creating for a specific group. I was going to say, is that a way in which you get your students excited about kind of mathematics using code or is it a way that you get them excited about coding you know through the lens of their mathematics lessons I both I would say I think that it's um coding has definitely brought another perspective into mathematics and what you can do with mathematics for a lot of my kids um that's another area that I'm passionate about in general is just changing the way mathematics instruction looks um you know, I'm trying to get away from sort of that old school model of just rote learning and drill and kill and those sorts of things and get kids excited about you know, how do we apply math and um, coding is a big piece of that. I've not heard the expression drill and kill before. I quite like that. <laughs> it's, it's a new one on me. Um, and so you're clearly, I mean, we can hear it when you're describing the activities that you're doing with the kids. You're, you're clearly very passionate about um, computing and programming specifically is that something that's always been the case have you always had that interest or is that something that has evolved over time no it was that was not always the case um so i think in that respect i maybe am a good example of someone that had no experience with programming was never exposed you know at school there, there were no courses when i was in school around coding my family were not programmers i mean i had zero exposure so it was something i kind of fell into and fell in love with and was it sort of scratch or, you know, what was it that pulled you in? You know, how did you fall into it? Uh, you know, I was thinking, I had to think back. What was the first right? thing I, <laughs> I tried? It was a, you know, it was a while ago. I was teaching fifth grade at the time and somewhere I had read about or seen something about App Inventor. And I, so oh, thinking back, yeah, I realized, yeah. oh my gosh, it was MIT App Inventor. And I thought, oh, I bet I have some kids that would love to try this. And so... I played around and thought it was really fun. Oh, you know what? Thinking back, I realized too, I did a tiny bit of like web design in college, right? That was my one like quarter long class. And I thought, okay, this is, this is cool. Maybe I want to get back into this. And I started like- You made some animated <laughs> GIFs and you embedded them into <laughs> your website. <laughs> I, it was a horrendous looking website too, but it was fun learning at least a little bit at the time. So that, yeah, it was MIT App Inventor though that I that got me back into that and and putting together a little lunch coding club with some fifth graders oh. and then it just kind of expanded from there. And so did, did it started in that informal space where you were kind of testing things out with the learners, right? Yeah, and you know, and I definitely prefaced the club with the understanding that Ms. Haas is not an expert by any means. I don't know what I'm doing, but you can come and play with me at lunch if you want. And they were all about it. It just, it went really well. And do you really enjoy that kind of experience of learning alongside your students, kind of solving problems together? Does that help you become more excited and they become excited with you? I think so. I think that, and I think probably a lot of educators, that's one characteristic that makes you an educator is that idea of, you know, we just like learning things too. So for me, it, I have no problem jumping in and saying, you know, this looked really neat and I don't know how to do it. So let's figure it out together. And of course, for the kids that there's this feeling of empowerment, like, oh, I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to teach the teacher now. And that definitely brings a bit more excitement to what we're doing. How do you share your excitement 
with your students uh, beyond what you've already talked about? I like to talk about the things I'm doing personally too with them. And because I now am genuinely excited about trying to learn to code and trying to make things, I guess it naturally is easy for me to come in and say, hey guys, look at you know what I tried this weekend. And it was an epic failure, but it was so fun and I'm gonna keep trying to figure it out. And so I think when your students see you excited about something and they see you know, the things that you're trying and the things that you're learning, that that just sort of naturally rubs off onto them. And so even if they weren't interested before, they'll at least give it a try at that point. Yeah, something like being unashamed, unashamedly passionate about something. Like my, my students would be very much, all right, sir, we get it. You like programming. Stop telling us your anecdotes. I, <laughs> I think I probably went a little bit too far in the other <laughs> direction. But yeah, I think I think just it can be quite catching enthusiasm enthusiasm is infectious i think yeah and i i think you know a question i have and i think people listening to this podcast would want to to know as well is you know how do you share that excitement beyond your classroom and your teaching to kind of other teachers other educators who are, who are perhaps around you kind of look and go oh you're doing something interesting but i'm a little bit frightened of doing that or but they want to tap into the same excitement kind of what tips would would you give to those people or how have you gone about that right well i think my own team is a good example of that currently none of them have had any experience really and you know my current second grade partners came from middle school English and came from, you know, different backgrounds. And so I think that just being unafraid to try something and and fail in front of your colleagues is one way to definitely help them feel a little more comfortable to try something too. When they see the excitement in the students, it's easier to say, hey, you know, maybe we try this with your students next. And we've gotten really creative about it too, because I know some things that get in the way sometimes or that fear that I don't know enough to help the kids if I try it by myself, right? So we've done things like, well, let's just switch classes for the day then. So how about you take my kids and you do something with them that you know more about and I'll do a little programming lesson with your kids and kind of get them going. So then there's not that fear that, you know, starting from ground zero, how am I going to help them if I don't know what I'm doing? We've also done, I've, I've been really lucky too, just to be asked to do, you know, little training sessions around the district and to coach other people and, and getting the kids involved in that helps as well. I think just having them come be the coaches and, and, and be the support system makes other educators sometimes feel a little more comfortable getting going. I think that's that's really important what you, you were saying there about seeing the impact on the students. I think whilst I think any any educator, whilst they might have anxiety about you know delivering something themselves, the moment they can see the impact that that enthusiasm has on the students, I think that's really going to help them overcome some of their own kind of fear or, or concerns. Absolutely. And I think you have to be willing to open up your classroom for them to see that, too, because we can often become very siloed in our own classrooms. And so finding ways to open up your room to people to see what's happening um, is going to be important, too. Terrifying, but uh, rewarding. <laughs> We're clearly a bunch of excitable educators, but how important is excitement and energy to our young people? Well, Rowan Mather is a computing student from Cambridge in England, currently finishing her qualification in A-level computing. She's a passionate student of computing and, and yet still finds time to run the CS Society at college. So Rowan, what gets you excited about code? Hello, thank you for having me. What I really love is just solving puzzles and any way to possibly solve puzzles is so exciting to me. On the side of college, like extracurricular, I really love the National Cypher Challenge and the Harvard, I think it's called CX, CSX50 challenges. So yeah, really love those. So do you go out and like source challenges to get involved in? Oh yeah, 100%. You just like, what's yeah. the next big problem that can I, I can solve? Or are you drawn and motivated by you know, prestige, getting a prize? <laughs> oh no, it's not about the prize. I just love doing the coding. <laughs> <laughs> and and what was the last program that you wrote either for fun or for college what's what's sort of really kind of kept you motivated recently in programming so in terms of sort of things that i've done um just for fun i haven't had a lot of time in a while because i've been working on my computer science nea which is coursework so for that i was making a health app for a condition called me which is quite similar to long covid quite interestingly so it's 
being talked about a bit more now. And I made that. That's for Android. So yeah. Um, before that. And what does it do? Uh, well, it's for tracking. So like you, quite often people with ME have trouble sort of managing their life um, in terms of how much sleep they get, what they eat, how much activity they do. So that means that they can get really tired very easily. So it just helps you keep a track of what you've done that day and sort of plot it on a graph for you. And do you know someone who has that condition? Is that what drew you to wanting to find a way to help them track uh, their day in, day out? Yeah, well, it's, it's because of my mum, actually. She has that mm. condition. So um, you have to have an end user for your coursework, um, someone that you're making it specifically for. It can be a client or whatever, but. I had that personal connection, so I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Some handy testing that you could do locally. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah, it makes it really easy to see exactly what people would want and, uh, you know, what you can improve on. You just go and ask your mum. <laughs> it's really interesting. I think that that personal connection to a project, I think how, how I think there's a relationship there between um, that and the excitement. I think, you know, it, sort of, it drives some passion and energy behind the project. So it's not just a thing that you've got to do, but it's a thing that you want to do as well. So do you think that's an important part of, you know, that you bring to programming is, is sort of passion and energy for, the, for a particular project? Absolutely. I completely agree. Yeah, it's really helpful to have someone who you're like making it for and they have a problem, whatever it is that needs solving, and they can tell you exactly what they want. And it just makes it a bit more human. You're not just doing something. Um, if you're working all the day or on a computer, then having something to go and show someone and see what they like and what they dislike about it is it's really helpful. When did you first become interested in coding and programming? So I started, as lots of people do at primary school, with Scratch. I really like Scratch. It's really cute. Um, so I did a little bit then. But in terms of uh, sort of past block coding. I did some in year seven and I started teaching myself some Python um, I came across. And from there, I, I did a lot of teaching myself, a lot of Googling and just sort of playing, making little like text adventures and things. And, and then I started finding lots of competitions on the internet and stuff, doing those. And did that passion come from someone inspirational? Was there a teacher who first introduced you to Scratch or was it something you found on your own outside of um, school? Um, so I don't think I had one specific person that inspired me as such. Um, I found quite a lot of like YouTubers and authors online that would quite often um, mathematical and computer things like uh, number file and computer file. And then in terms of like teachers, Teachers have been really important for giving me opportunities, extracurricular stuff, so encouraging me to do things like running the Computer Science Society. And at secondary school, I had a teacher that got me into game making. So that was really cool. And how important do you think it is, um, Rowan, for um, for students uh, or and young people to have that that enthusiasm and energy? How you know, The role that teachers play in terms of fostering that enthusiasm, how important would you say that is to to your learning? I think it's really important. Yeah, it's crucial. I think if you have a teacher that really loves what they do, what they do, really passionate about what they do, then it comes through and you just enjoy the learning so much more. And also just uh, like a student's personal enthusiasm is really important. There's quite a lot when you're when you're first learning to code, there's quite a lot of hurdles that you have to get over, sort of shifts in way of thinking about a problem. So if you have enthusiasm, then you can you can come at that confidently and get over those hurdles easily so i think you've touched on something that's really important which is um especially in programming is how often you you fail <laughs> does that make sense like how often um you you try and write a piece of code whether that's in in blocks or in text and it doesn't do the thing that you were planning for it to do the first time you run that code like how you know you talked about enthusiasm being really important to get over those those hurdles but how did you you know, continue with programs when when they didn't work. Did you reach out to peers? Did you talk to teachers? Like, how did you how did you get past those hurdles? Yeah, I mean, the amount of time that I spent just not understanding why something doesn't work. De uh, definitely, everyone that does programming spends so much time just like googling a problem and going, oh, I don't understand. Um, but I think support from from friends, from teachers, is super helpful if you just give it to someone else and be like. I can't understand why this section doesn't work. Can you look at it and spot something? 
um, me and my best friend look at each other's work all the time. And sometimes, you know, I think our audience, particularly educators, you know, they're always really struggle with finding extra time to do things right and I think one of the big fear factors for teachers in bringing programming and coding into their classroom is that fear of oh no my young people are going to stumble with their programs and probably at different points um, in a lesson and I don't have enough time to give every single student that kind of individual attention so do you have any kind of tips or ways in which you would help find a solution to your problem that didn't involve ask, asking a teacher? Yeah, I think, like I was saying, I think if you have students in the class that sort of finish a task or something early, then quite often just talking to, to another student is, is really helpful. And it's been a bit of a shame in lockdown that we haven't had so much of an opportunity to do that. Um, quite often at, when I was doing computer science at GCSE, um, you know, I would go around and, and help other people and other people in my class would do the same thing. So I think if a teacher doesn't directly have enough time, then in sort of identifying students that would work together well and pairing them up is really helpful. And I, I was going to ask about, I mean, I think we've, we've spoken about this a little bit earlier on in our conversations with um, with Amanda and, and, and before. But for me, when I when I you know experience those challenges, I think one of the things that keeps me going often is knowing that at the end of that, when things work, there is this kind of mini moment of of pride and sort of slightly silent elation that you know you kind of feel that I, I i did that i fixed that problem i solved that and do you do you can you relate to that do you get the same feeling when you when you solve those problems and overcome those hurdles oh definitely um i remember when i was doing my nea there was one problem that i'd been trying to work on for like five hours and i finally fixed it and i actually jumped up and down um i was so excited <laughs> So that moment when you finally get something to work is it, it is just elation. It's so good. Um, so the sort of pouring over your code for five hours becomes worth it. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you, Rowan. Thank you so much for joining us um, today and, uh, and and good luck with your, your, your NEA and your qualification and, and for the future. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we thought we'd ask our community, what excites you about code? We did this via Twitter and we had some great responses. So Kat Lamin, who is a Google certified educator and trainer from Twickenham in England told us, I love how learning to code gives children the opportunity to understand how creativity and computing go hand in hand. It's the opportunity for young people to explore, create and apply learning to both virtual and physical systems and have tangible results at the end of it all. So again, James, another teacher sort of echoing this idea about creativity and that kind of openness, that exploration uh, that we, we, we've talked about a lot already today with our guests. Yeah, and I think it's another point that we've that's echoed here is from um, Anna Donoghue, who's a computational tinkerer from Exa Foundation. And I think he talks about that that constant state of flow where you forget to eat and no longer feel tired. And I remember Rowan mentioning just now when we we're chatting about spending five hours working on her code. And I can relate to that, like five hours of obsessive working and forgetting to do other things. I think that's, that's a really, that really resonates with me. Well, funny enough, Amy Walsh, who is a National Centre Hub leader and facilitator in England, mentions that kind of light bulb moment as well in her response. She's put, when teaching, some of the best moments are when you see the light bulb moment in a student that has persevered with their code. And they also go on to say the creativity and ingenuity that people show when developing a solution. No one believes you when you say it is a creative subject. Uh, and I think <laughs> I think that's just been echoed so many times today that computer science and the practical application of that computer science knowledge through programming really is such a creative, uh, inspiring pursuit. You can solve problems that are meaningful to you uh, and it's worth you know, finding different pedagogies to help bring bring this excitement uh, into educational spaces, whether they are formal or informal. Yeah, and I think just just to end, I think on one one last point, I think from Spencer Organ, um, who's a head of computer science at the Keshe Academy, he I think he sums it up quite nicely as well. In that, program feels like a fresh journey of learning and discovery. It's like this constant sort of discovery. Each new project adds more skills and knowledge to his to his repertoire. So I, I think that really kind of sums up the the journey that programming can take you on as well.
Well, if you have a question for us or a comment about our discussion today, then you can email us at contact at helloworld.cc or you can contact us on Twitter via at helloworld underscore edu. So, James, what did we learn? Well, um, I learned or I had confirmed this idea that um, the programming is creative. You know, I've, something that I've always believed. I felt that feel that you know programming is a very creative discipline, and it's so lovely to hear that echoed by all the people that we've heard from, both in person and via um, Twitter. I think you know that really confirms that viewpoint for me. Um, how about you, Carrie? Well, I've learned that you know spending five hours poring over my code is worth it. <laughs> Absolutely.